It's time to get spooky. It is officially spooky season and I love, 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 love YA horror books. So today I'm here to recommend you some if you want to be a scaredy cat and read a horror book that is chilling and spooky. Perfect spooky season reads. I have just been such a big fan of horror books ever since I picked up Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, which is actually an adult horror book, but then I started reading YA horror and really love it. So here are my recs for the spooky season. I'm gonna start off with the ones that I have read and then go into more that I am interested in reading in the future. So the first book that we have is Horrid by Katrina Leno. If you watched my October TBR, this was on it and I have since finished it before filming this video, but it is very, very spooky. Following her father's death, Jane North Robinson moves from California to a dreary old dilapidated mansion in Maine that is part of her mother's family. All they want is a fresh start, but behind North Manor's exterior lurks a history that has them feeling more alone than ever. As Jane starts to settle into a new home, she finds solace in old books and starts to make friends at school. However, she also faces bullying from the resident Bad Seed, and she is struggling to tamp down her anger in response to this bullying. Jane's mom also seems to be spiraling with the return to her childhood home, but she won't reveal why. Then Jane discovers that the storage room that is always kept locked is actually a little girl's bedroom, left untouched for years, and not quite as empty of inhabitants as it may appear. Is it grief, mental illness, or something more horrid? I read this one on audio and like it was just such a spooky, chilling experience. Absolutely devoured it and it was just like a really good if you're looking for a good YA horror to start out with. The next YA horror book I have to recommend is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. And this one is definitely on the border of like horror and fantasy, but it is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling. And I read this one last year and was actually really surprised by how much I loved it and made my top 10 of 2020 list, which I didn't think it would going into this. Adelaide lives a very sheltered life at Highmore, a manor near the sea where she lives with her many sisters. Once there were 12 of them, but loneliness fills the grand halls as her sisters mysteriously start dying one by one. Each death was more tragic than the last. The plague, a plummeting fall, a drowning, and a slippery plunge. And there are whispers throughout the surrounding villages that the sisters are cursed by the gods. Disturbed by a series of ghostly visions, Adelaide becomes convinced that her sister's murders were no mere accident. The girls have been sneaking out every night to attend glittering balls, dancing until their feet are so sore in silk gowns and shimmering slippers. And Adelaide isn't sure whether to join them or stop them. Because who or what are they really dancing with? This was such a good gothic horror book and I felt like it was a perfect balance of the fantasy, the horror, and the chilling factor. I really, really love this and I definitely recommend if you are looking to read a horror book. The next book on the list is Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. Claire Legrand wrote one of my favorite fantasy trilogies ever, the Imperium Trilogy. Check that out if you are looking for like a new adult fantasy, but this is her horror novel. And I listened to this one in an audio and it was really, really cool. Beware of the woods and the dark, dank deep. He'll follow you home and he won't let you sleep. Who are the Sawhill girls? Marion is the new girl who is awkward and plain, steady and dependable. She's weighed down by tragedy and hungry for love. Zoe is the social pariah. She's luckless and lonely, hurting but hiding it. Val is the queen bee, gorgeous and privileged, ruthless and regal. Their stories come together on the island of Sawhill Rock, where the beautiful meadows meet the rolling seas, where kids whisper the legends of an insidious monster around campfires, where girls have been disappearing for decades, stolen away by a ravenous evil. No one has dared to fight until now. Definitely a super, super creepy one. And then the last book on this list that I have read is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. And this one is definitely like a horror fantasy, <clears throat> leaning like more heavily in the fantasy um, aspect, kind of being that it's set in like a fantasy world. That's kind of what I mean when I say horror fantasy. 
It's not set in our world. Rin only cares about two things, her family and her family's graveyard. Ever since the death of her parents, Rin and her siblings have been maintaining the family's graveyard as the small town's resident grave diggers. The problem with their small town, Colbrin, however, is that the dead don't always stay dead. The risen corpses are known as bone houses, and legend says that they are the result of a decades-old curse. When Ellis, an apprentice map maker, with a mysterious past arrives in town, the bone houses begin attacking with a new ferocity. What is it that draws them near, and how can they be stopped for good? Together, Ellis and Ren embark on a journey to stop the curse, where they have to face not only the monsters that lurk, but the monstrous inner truths within themselves. This one was really fun, really creepy, and gothic. Definitely loved it and recommend it. Okay, and now on to the books on this list that I have not yet read, but I'm very interested in reading. First up, we have Small Favors by Erin A. Craig, because I loved House of Salt and Sorrows. I had to buy her new book when it came out, and I am actually probably going to be starting this, like, tomorrow um, after I finish filming this video. <laughs> and so the back says, Enter not the forest deep, beyond the bells the dark feats keep. The heart's desire always comes with a price. Oh. Ellery Downing has always waited for something to happen. She lives in Amity Falls, which is an isolated town surrounded by impenetrable forest. Her days are filled with tending to her family's beehives and dreaming of something bigger. Early settlers fought off the monsters in the woods, and rumors of their reappearance keeps the Downing family from venturing too far. When some townsfolk go missing on a scheduled supply run, a heavy unease settles around the falls. Strange activities begin happening around the town, and as the season changes, it becomes very clear that, that these creatures are very real. They are offering to fulfill the residents' deepest desires in return for one small favor. Uh, and this is apparently a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. I actually have not yet read a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, but it is one of the fairy tales that have always most intrigued me because like the Rumpelstiltskin Bernie episode was like my favorite as a child. That's a really like weird way to have a favorite fairy tale, but it just stuck with me throughout my life. I don't know. Next up is two books by Rory Powers, the first of being Wilder Girls, which I feel like was so popular when it came out and I just didn't get around to reading it because I wasn't into horror yet, but now. Now I want to read it. So it's been 18 months since the Raxter School for Girls was putting under quarantine. Since the talks hit and Hetty's life has gone upside down. It started slow. First the teachers died off one by one. Then it invaded the students' bodies and started turning them into something strange and foreign. Now the girls are cut off from the rest of the world and are only on this island trying to fend for themselves. They dare not go outside the school's fence where the talks has made the wilderness even more dangerous. They wait for the cure that they were promised, while the tox seeps into everything. But when Baya goes missing, Eddie will do anything to find her, even if it means breaking quarantine and braving the horrors that lie beyond the fence. And when she does, Hetty learns that there's way more to their story than she ever imagined. So spooky. And I think that this one involves body horror, so just be aware of that going into this. And the next is Rory Powers' sophomore novel, which is Burn Our Bodies Down. And this, I believe, I went to a signing with Rory Powers at it, and she was like, it's corn horror. So it takes place like in a cornfield type setting. Ever since Margot was born, it's been just her and her mother. No family outside of that to speak of, no history, nothing. But it's not enough for Margot. She wants a family. And when she finds a photograph pointing to her history, she jumps on the chance and visits Faelin the town in the photo. Only when she gets there, it's not what she expected. Margot's mother left for a reason. Was it to protect her or to escape from something? The only thing Margot knows for sure is that there's poison in their family tree. And their roots are dug so deeply into Faelin, she may not be able to escape now that she's arrived. Spooky. This next book is What Big Teeth by Rose Sesbo. And I love this cover. I think it's like so cool yet spooky. Eleanor Zarin has been estranged from her wild family for years. When she flees boarding school after a horrifying incident, she goes to the only place that she can think of, her family home. But when she gets there, she fails to fit in with all of her relatives who prowl the grounds around her family home and read fortunes in the guts of birds. 
Eleanor finds herself desperately trying to hold them together in order to save them all. Eleanor must learn to embrace her family and tame the darkness inside of her. So it seems like very gothic fantasy horror vibes, which I'm here for. Next we have House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This is a beautiful cover. I've heard a lot of good things about this one. Iris Hollow has always been strange. Something happened to her and her two sisters when they were children, something that they can't remember that has left them all with a half moon scar at the base of their throat. Iris has spent most of her life avoiding this weirdness, but when her oldest sister Grey goes missing, the weirdness starts dialing up. Horned men start shadowing her. A corpse falls out of her sister's ceiling, and ugly, impossible memories start twisting to the front of her mind. As Iris retraces Grey's last footsteps, it becomes increasingly clear that she has to untangle the twisted web of what happened to them when they were children. The closer Iris gets to the truth, the closer she comes to understanding, the answer is dark and dangerous, and Grey has been keeping an impossible secret from her for years. This one seems so spooky and like atmospheric seems really, really intense. Next, we have The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas, and this one came out this summer, and I've heard lots of good things about it. Jake Livingston is one of the only black kids at St. Clair's Prep, with the only other one being his insanely popular older brother. It's hard enough fitting in, but to make matters worse, Jake can see the dip. In fact, he sees them all the time. Usually, they're stuck in their death loop, reliving that over and over again. But then, Jake meets Sawyer a troubled kid who shot and killed six kids at his high school before killing himself last year. Now a powerful, vengeful ghost, he has plans for the afterlife, plans that involve Jake. Suddenly, everything Jake knew about Ghost goes heads up as Sawyer begins haunting him and bodies turn up in his neighborhood. High school soon becomes a survival game, one Jake is not sure that he's going to win. So yes, definitely this one involves a school shooting, so just be aware of that going into it because I know that's highly sensitive subject matter. Next, we have The Companion by Katie Ellender, and my friend Keely read this and said that she really loved it. The other orphans say Margot is lucky. Lucky to have survived the horrible accident that happened to her parents. And lucky to have her own room because she wakes up in the middle of the night screaming. And finally, lucky to be chosen by a prestigious family to live at their estate. But it wasn't luck that made them choose Margot. Instead, she was handpicked to be a companion to their silent daughter, Agatha. At first, helping with Agatha does not seem that bad. But soon, the isolated gothic house starts playing tricks with Margot's mind, making her question everything she believes about the family and about herself. Margot Margot's bad dreams may have stopped when she come to live with Agatha, but the real nightmare is just about to begin. And then we have The Devil Makes Three by Toria Bovellino. Tessa only wants three things. Time to practice her cello, for her sister to be happy, and for everyone to leave her alone. Instead, Tess finds herself working at the school library all summer. The worst of them is Elliot Birch. Snide and privileged and constantly requesting forbidden grimoires. After a bargain it leads to the discovery of an ancient book in the library's grimoire collection, the pair accidentally release a demon bound within its text. The demon will stop at nothing to stay free, manipulating ink to threaten Tess and dismantling Elliot's strange magic. All she knows is to stay free, the demon needs her, and he'll have her dead or alive. Nothing like a good demon in the library type story. And then the last book that I have on this list is a future release. And this is My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottenham. And this one comes out in April. Two girls inexplicably linked. An ancient creature rising in the dark. And a town on the verge of being devoured. Finch is the newest transfer to a very prestigious academy that it has rigorous academics. But Finch is not what she seems. She should have died months ago in an accident that should have led her, her drown at the bottom of a river, but something monstrous, ancient, and terrifying and decided that she shouldn't die. Finch doesn't know why she woke up after her heart stopped, but since dying, she's felt a constant pull from the school and the surrounding town. Selena St. Clair sees right through Finch, and she knows something is seriously wrong, but despite her suspicion, she feels drawn to Finch. One night, Finch, Selena, and her friends accidentally summon a carnivorous creature of immense power in the depths of the school. It promises to grant every desire the girls have in exchange for body parts. But as the cost of their wanting becomes more deadly, Finch and Selena must learn to work together to stop the horror they unleashed before it consumes the entire island. So there you have it. Those are my YA horror wrecks. I hope that you guys find some new horror books to read and just get in the complete spooky season. I definitely also recommend listening to horror books on audio. I just find that's like my favorite way to read horror because I just really feel like put in the spooky atmospheric setting. So let me know if you read any of these down below or if you plan on reading any of these after my video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your engagement with my channel really helps me out. And with that, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.